Grace and peace. I'm Brian Muster, the Baptist Campus Minister at Drexel University, and this is Peace and Power Bible Study, the peace of Jesus Christ to change your life, the power of the Holy Spirit to change the world around you. And we are beginning our look at 1 John. God is light, God is love, and we are going through the first section of 1 John, 1 John 1, 1 through 4, and last video, the video immediately preceding this, we looked at the section and we looked at how the author identifies himself as an apostle who physically experienced Jesus and is authoritatively witnessing about that experience. Now, this video, we're going to take one of the ideas from this section and trace it through, specifically through the rest of 1 John. We will look at it a couple other places where this idea shows up in the rest of Scripture. This is 1 John 1 4. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. The author here is specifically telling his audience why he is writing this. And I would just want to show this verse here. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Now, so the rest of this book might be an interesting way. How is he planning on completing his joy by writing this letter? What is going on there? How is that question being answered? Now, this sentence here is one of the reasons why we think the author of First John is the same as the author of the gospel entitled John and the author of Second John and the author of Third John. Now, these kind of ideas, there are similarities in the language of what's going on here between all four of those pieces we find in Scripture, and that's why we're connecting them, because it seems like the author of these four works thinks, similar, thinks the same way. For, uh, John, the Gospel of John 15 and 11, I have spoken these things to you. This is Jesus speaking. I have spoken these things to you so that my joy may be complete in you and your joy may be complete. Second John 4, I was very glad or I had joy to find some of your children walking in the truth and keeping with the command we have received from the Father. Third John 3 through 4, for I was very glad or I had joy when some brothers came and testified to your faithfulness to the truth how you are walking in the truth. I have no greater joy than this to hear that my children are walking in the truth. So it feels like, it seems like the author of 1 John, John, is picking up on a sentiment of Jesus that he actually wrote down in the Gospel of John, that Jesus' joy is tied up in his followers' joy and Jesus' joy is made complete by his father's followers' joy being complete. And this joy is all wrapped up, as we see in 3 John and 2 John, all wrapped up in this idea that their disciples, disciples of Jesus through the apostle, are still walking or are continuing to walk in the faith. So making the joy complete has something about living a faithful life, and continuing to live a faithful life. As we look at this throughout the rest of 1 John, this will be coming the theme, kind of the purpose of what 1 John is. 1 John 2.1 says, I am writing, my little children, I am writing these things so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Yet I'm writing you a new command, which is true in him, because the darkness is passing away and the light is already shining. And we go on to see in the rest that that new command is an old command, which goes back to Jesus. And it's this new command to love one another. And then moving on, we also see 2.26. I have written these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. So John is writing some way to his audience to help them 
not be deceived by specific people who are trying to deceive them. And then 1 John 5.13 is kind of the key one. I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Interestingly enough, verses 2.7 and 2.21 includes reasons why he is not writing. Um, and then we're going to, uh, then there's this, oh, okay. Connecting this, that 513 is so that they may know they have eternal life. They may know they have eternal life. John 20, 31. But these things are written so that you may believe in Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of God, and by believing you may have life in his name. The idea here that is developing is that from this verse, it seems like the Gospel of John was written so that people may believe and have eternal life. The letter of 1 John was written so that those who believed in Jesus and have eternal life may know or be assured or be confirmed in that eternal life and continue to walk in it. So so it seems like 1 John is a development from the Gospel of John. And it seems very, very clear that the same person is writing both of them with the intention that you are reading them together in some sort of way. This idea is that they can know that they have eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. And that would make joy complete. That would help them follow the new command of love one another. Faith and love are always connected. That would prevent them from being deceived by those who are coming against them. All these things are kind of wrapped up together. And John actually also says this in a very interesting poetic form in 1 John 2, 12 through 14. I am writing you to you, little children, because your sins have been forgiven because of Jesus' name. I am writing you to you, fathers, because you have come to know the one who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have had victory over the evil one. I have written to you, children, because you have come to know the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have come to know the one who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong. God's word remains in you, and you have had victory over the evil one. So John is expressing why he is writing this letter, and it is to encourage those who believe in Jesus Christ and give them an assurance of their eternal life based on their faith in Jesus. Now, it's interesting in this poem, in this 1 John 2, 12 through 14, it uses from the beginning, which is the idea we're going to trace through scripture next. And I just want to bring that up so that you are keyed off on it when we get to the next video, because these verses have that phrase that we'll be tracing throughout the rest of scripture. But the idea is, John is talking about his personal eyewitness authoritative experience of Jesus to people who have come to believe and have fellowship with God through their testimony about Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. And then he is now writing them so that they can have this assurance that the faith they placed in Jesus from the beginning is going to be fruitful and give them eternal life, which will make their joy complete, will, which will keep them from being deceived, and all these other pieces, give them victory over the evil one. Um, this is why John is writing First John. And it's interesting to trace that line of thought throughout this one particular letter and other writings John has had. Okay. As always, 
There are two ways to join this conversation, live Monday night, 7 p.m. via Zoom, and these weekly wrap-ups on YouTube and WordPress. I am all over social media, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. Those links are in the description below. Thank you so much for joining me in this conversation, and I look forward to continuing it later.